Uh, Howard, in the 1960s, you transitioned to uh, other areas of, uh, right. of study, and uh, you worked on the Apollo projects, which is very exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences and the type of things you did on the Apollo projects? Well, yes. Yeah, so within the same group, there were three fellows at the lab who developed a new way of detecting charged particles, high-energy charged particles, and we don't need to talk about how they did that. But uh, they were interested in such things as cosmic rays and uh, became involved in the Apollo program. And actually, through high magnetic fields, I ended up working with them. That's a complicated story. But uh, we received first lunar soils and then lunar rocks, and we looked at the cosmic ray exposures and the stirring up of the moon's surface by making studies on those. And then we actually also put some experiments. We had one on Apollo 16 and one on Apollo 17 that, were, that we actually built, GE built, and we put them up there. We also did some work. Uh, the, the surveyor had been put up there and had been there a couple of years when Apollo 12 landed at the same spot. And we did some studies, cosmic ray studies again, on some of the parts from the surveyor. Uh, so what were the goal of the studies? Was it a resistance or durability? And, and, and uh, no. what, what, what were you actually We were trying to find, for? mostly what we were trying to find out was how many cosmic rays came from the sun, mm -hmm. what, their, how many, what elements they were, and how energetic they were. And we made measurements of that. This was essentially geoscience. And we made these measurements and we published them in the literature. G, all GE got out of this was publicity. And uh, it's interesting that looking back now, it's hard to believe that that was important. I actually ended up a picture of me working with an Apollo helmet in one of the GE quarterly reports, which you wouldn't see now. <laughs> I hope you still have that picture. Oh, yes. Good. It's about. <laughs> uh -huh. That's great. I remember meeting Jack Swiger at the uh -huh. 109th Air National oh, yes. Guard. He landed yeah. here in Schenectady, right. astronaut. Um, you also worked, I was told, I mean, you could tell me, uh, on biological effects on the a astronauts themselves. Is that the air quality or what was, <laughs> what was that all about? How did you do that? Well, well I tell have you. my ways. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is now a particular fellow named Bob Fleischer. But he discovered, he went to a meeting down in Houston and found out that the helmets that the astronauts were wearing was made out of Lexan. They were made out of Lexan. And Lexan was one of our star performers in terms of being particle detectors. And so we got uh, the helmets and we actually etched out, I mean, we, we made these tracks visible in the helmets. And one time Bob Fleischer was down giving a lecture to the astronauts and he showed them this. Where you could see exactly where these particles had come in and gone out. He said, now we know what's going through the head of the astronauts. And they didn't think that was very funny. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> I hope they gave you a sou souvenir helmet with your name on it on that project. No, but... Uh, it would have been nice. Yes, that would have been nice. No, I, they ended up in the Smithsonian. <laughs> uh -huh. uh,